I look forward to it. I remember asking staff folks, have we received the bar journal yet? Isn't that supposed to be out? And I always used to flip to the back and see what cases he thought were of interest and how he analyzed them, which was always interesting to me. But what amazed me about Charlie de Grandpreach Collins, A, that he did it for four decades. We just think about that. Uh, you know, every first of the year you have the New Year's resolutions. How long do we keep those? Right. He did this for four decades. What was also amazing to me, both as a lawyer and as a judge, is his expansive knowledge of the law. He didn't just report the decision in summary fashion. He usually had some insight on it. Uh, and that's enormously difficult to do. And I think the reason people respected him here and around the state is because they respected his legal talent. And so it didn't have to be in some narrow niche where his opinion mattered. Uh, it often mattered in areas where he would not have spent his lifetime practicing. So he was a gifted lawyer and a, and a gifted critic, I think. And I'm just disappointed that he's not going to do this for another 40 years. I think he should do that. The writing in between the, in between the lines, a little sarcasm here, a little irony here, uh, uh, just uh, uh, you could almost see Charlie uh, when you read uh, a, a, a column of his, what the expression was on his face as he dictated. Charlie also has a great intellect and was one of those people, I guess one thing I'd say about Charlie was he was always interested in what you were doing, um, interested in talking with you about cases you were working on, even though Charlie was in the probate trust on the state side of the practice, if he knew I was involved in a trial, he wanted to talk about it, he was interested in what you were doing, he was supportive of you, and one of those people also that if you needed help with anything, you could always go down and get Charlie's opinion. Mm -hmm. I, I remember during the, uh, the long Seabrook uh, nuclear power plant era, uh, which you know went on nearly forever, and cases kept going to the New Hampshire Supreme Court. At one time, Charlie uh, uh, suggested that the public service company was a quote-unquote hapless company, meaning that it was in deep trouble. And then he went on uh, later on to suggest that uh, uh, perhaps it was going to you know, disappear from the face of the earth. And, and the problem was that the victim, namely, it, it didn't even realize that. And he was, he, it was prophetic because, as you know, the, eventually the public service company they did go into bankruptcy. Once you're on the court, you uh, you begin to uh, think of of the law as a whole, and not your little isolated cases that you have from time to time and before the court. So this gave us uh, a perspective of the development of the law in context, mm -hmm. and that was important. Mm -hmm. and more important probably to the judiciary, mm -hmm. and it gave us a chance to uh, see, you know, which way the law was bending. I mean, this is a common law state, mm -hmm. and the law takes a direction, and hopefully it moves with deliberate speed, which is a great expression. And it was fascinating to see, as the case had developed, uh, the sense that the law was moving in a particular way. Charlie uh, is an, a living example of a sense of humor. Uh, he could find humor in everything, even his own foibles and follies. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was no question when you entered the room whose voice was the loudest and strongest and most often heard. I think he's done a great job for the Bar Association. He's an honor, uh, a credit to the McLean office and to the profession in general, and uh, I wish him many more years of uh, good health, happiness, and good humor. He has um, a tendency to retire from fishing earlier than some of uh, 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 the rest of us and go back to the cabin and pour himself a very tall glass of scotch and start <laughs> working. So uh, that may explain, you know, some of the more, you know, irascible, you know, tone of some of those columns. I don't know. Two things took top priority, fishing and Charlie's column, Lex Loki. In my 11 plus years of working with him, the loom of the deadlines were not so grim. 
even though he would procrastinate, his column was never submitted late. And really, he didn't have a clue that I always told him the deadline was a week before it was due. <laughs> I began reading it when I was practicing law, so it became habit forming. And so, as a lawyer, mm -hmm. and so, so I, I, I think people, I think people did read it because, as the, it was funny, as the article I read in the Bar News said that uh, his commentary was lively and authoritative. And uh, having been on the Supreme Court, you know, I, I would not always use the word lively and Supreme Court opinion in the same sentence. So oh. <laughs> for him to be able to do that certainly is a feat. And I think I think a lot of people read that column because he was able to condense things and to make it clear and to focus it. And I, I always I read it for the whole forty years. I just want to look at the camera and say thank you again, Charlie. Spectacular. <laughs> <laughs>